Okay, I think we'll, we'll make a start so we can make best use of everybody's time. Um, first of all, welcome to everybody for joining. Um, this is our regular uh, webinar series. I mean, I say regular, it, it can be you know, every month or so we, we try and run one of these sessions. So the last one we had was on ad sales with Peter Lamb. And this time we're really happy to have Jeff Moriarty from Johnson Press. Um, we're going to run to about 45 minutes on this webinar. Um, and so there'll be some time for questions at the end as well. Um, so if you have got a question, there's um, a little questions um, section on the side of your screen in the uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Um, you can type your questions there. I can see them and then raise them with Jeff as we go on. So um, that's, that's me, I'm Nick Siastra, so I'm Deputy Director of Global Advisory here at OneIFRA. Most of what I'm doing is all around digital revenue, um, which makes things fairly simple, but of course also very challenging. And um, I'll introduce Jeff properly in a second. Um, we are recording this session, so if you do want to catch up with it afterwards or, or see um, the slides, um, then you could be able to get that by YouTube when we're done. The context of everything we're doing today um, is really about this alternative revenue report that we produced um, earlier in the year. And really, um, we see this challenge that reader revenue um, has still been quite slow to transition to digital. Um, online display is growing, but not perhaps as fast as we might have expected. And certainly, um, a lot of publishers have really failed to take the proper share of revenue on mobile in a, in a very different way to companies like Facebook. So the market is changing extremely fast. And what we're now seeing is that it makes a lot more sense to put your um, eggs into a number of baskets. So in other words, to, to, to diversify. So for some, that means doing events. It means doing e-commerce. It means doing... Uh, licensing your video output, for example. And one of the big things, and a lot of um, US companies um, have been doing already for a couple of years, um, is digital marketing services. So working with um, the smaller or medium-sized enterprises to offer them a full range of marketing services to help them work with, they may already be your customers, but then to help those customers with their websites, uh, to work with Facebook and Twitter and some of the other social media companies. Um, so yeah, we've got a hashtag um, as a quick reminder here, if you want to um, continue the discussion after this, hash new local revs. Um, and we should also note we've got some upcoming events from WANIFRA. The big thing is next week. Hopefully some of you will be with us uh, in Vienna, in Austria. And uh, we've also got Digital Media Asia coming up in November, and we have a study tour to San Francisco, which I'll be leading. So basically, go to events.wanifra.org. That is the only plug. And of course, you can see here the short URL to download the report. If you're a member, um, you can download the report for free, and there's a small charge if you're not a member. So I'm really excited that Jeff can join. Uh, I met Jeff, we were just trying to work this out before we started, I think it was back around 2012 when he was at the Boston Globe, which at the time was part of the New York Times, or at least part of the New York Times kind of empire. And they'd just launched the globe.com, they just launched the Boston Globe's new responsive site. And since then, a lot has changed. Um, the Globe is now owned by um, the John Henry family, so that's... Uh, the same guy who owns Liverpool Football Club, for any um, football fans listening. And Jeff is now working in the UK as part of a major regional news group, Johnson Press. Um, and as he was just saying, so that now means launching, um, instead of one website, launching 200 at a time. So before I hand over to Jeff, I mean, you might ask, you know, why the title? Um, why would we call this the, the first million? Um, when we produced the report and we were interviewing Jeff, 
one of the things that came up was in the 2015 results, the first half results for Johnson Press, the new product portfolio there um, was up 63% and at 1.4 million pounds. And a large part of that was marketing services. So we thought that's a really good place to start. Once you've got your first million, you've, you've got a business going on. So that's my introduction. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Jeff. Excellent. Thanks, Nick. You might want to share my screen one second. I'll let you get set up. But um, you might want to introduce yourself as well, and then. Great. And Nick, you can see that. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks everyone for joining, and Nick for asking me to uh, to run through what we're doing here at Johnston Press. Um, you know, I think as Nick said, we've we've been trying to diversify our revenue streams here, as many others have been doing, by offering a, a wide range of products to our local customers. So. For, for us, you know, uh, I think you know we're, we're on this journey now, and it's been a couple of years in, in offering these kind of expanded products to our customers. And what I thought I'd do today is take you through kind of what we're doing, but also more in the context of how we're taking it to market, um, because I, I sit in a lot of these things as well. And sometimes, you know, you, you know this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, um, but you don't ever really get a sense of maybe how it's being presented to customers. So what what I have today is a is a is a kind of adapted presentation that we've been taking to market um, for the past just the past few months actually about um, about why small businesses why SMEs should be thinking about changing how how they're spending their their marketing um, and so I'll, I'll take you through this and, and hopefully it's it's helpful um, to see how we're how we're taking this to market so just a quick overview of Johnston Press this is broadly where we are. We reach a lot of uh, people across the UK. We're one of the larger regional newspaper groups in uh, in the UK. We have, I think, the, you know, one of the big points here is that we are sort of all over the place, and we have about 500 salespeople and a thousand journalists located throughout the country. So, um, very broadly and widely distributed. Um, part of what has led us to kind of where we are now is is understanding how. SMEs are spending their marketing uh, budgets. And in some research we did very recently, it was a small sample, but, but what we saw, as you can see in this chart, is that about 50% of uh, a small business's budget is being spent on digital products at the moment. So uh, you can see that search engine marketing, Facebook, and, and online display are a big part of that. But I think what was important to us in understanding this was that a lot of our customers have already moved on from you know the more traditional types of, uh, of media from a print led kind of marketing program and I think you know any of us who are in print media probably understand that and see that um, but but I think this this is important because it gave us a sense of where our customers already are or where many of them are at the moment and uh, how we can begin to offer different types of products to them to, to meet their needs um, so that so we we developed this what we call the why change story, which is uh, this this deck or kind of a slight variation of it is something that a sales rep would take out to a small business to sort of initiate a new conversation. These are customers maybe that have only bought print with us or maybe only ever bought print and digital display. So what we're what we're trying to do is get them to think differently about um, how they're how they're marketing themselves and how and how they're doing business. So some of these stats, you know, kind of help help uh, support that. So, you know, the fact that, you know, digital obviously is becoming a much more important part of people's decision-making process. Um, and so what, what we show is that, you know, you really need to um, think differently about how you attract customers. Um, and, you know, this is sort of broadly how important digital is in that mix now. And at the same time, you know, create a little bit of an urgency around the fact that, you know, uh, people have more choice online. National brands are trying to go local, and big brands have big resources in order to reach their customers. So, in order to compete in this, you know, modern uh, environment, they need to think differently about how about how they're doing things. So, 
you know, it's no longer enough as a small business just to do these things harder, longer, faster. It's about, you know, rethinking how they're reaching their customers. Um, and, you know, we try to reinforce, you know, some of these key questions. How, how do I reach more customers? Um, a lot of small businesses struggle with just keeping up with things. I mean, many of us on this call probably struggle with keeping up with what's going on in terms of, you know, how Google AdWords work, how Facebook works, what what's the Facebook algorithm, and how do you think about it as a small business. Um, so it's a, an increasingly complex digital environment to kind of do right, and a lot of small businesses we hear from um, just don't have the time to do that, and it's obviously not their area of expertise. So that so that is part of what we're offering is this kind of single purchase, single place where we can handle um, all of these different channels for you. Um, so these are some of the kind of big questions that we hear uh, from small businesses about, about how it's, it's hard to keep pace with what's going on. And as we start to talk about products, as you can tell at this point we haven't really gone into anything specific yet about you know this product or that product. We're really still setting the stage for how we offer how, how, how a mark, good marketing plan should really target customers in different parts of the funnel. So there's the, the top part of the funnel, which is uh, raising awareness about the business or the, or, or the, you know, the, the product, um, and then engaging with customers and then generating sales. And, and certain products, as you'll see and as you know, uh, are better at each part of this funnel. So what we're trying to get across is the fact that you know, Google AdWords alone or Facebook advertising alone probably doesn't have the type of impact that a broad kind of multi-channel uh, marketing campaign can have. And, and we're trying to then show, you know, a, a bit about the types of products that, that work and what they are best at. So this slide kind of showing um, you know, where sponsored listings and print ads fit into the mix. And, you know, there's, it's a company that still has a lot of newspapers that are actually, you know, still really effective for local businesses. It's also important to reinforce, you know, that print can be, can be a really strong medium depending on what you're trying to do, especially with, you know, on the slide before, raising awareness and engaging with your customers. Um, it's definitely at the top of the funnel, print has an important part to play. And then we start to, to talk about the fact that, that our, we now have a very modern multi-channel product set. So um, we obviously have print advertising as we've had in this company since 1712. Um, so we know that pretty well. We can build a website for you. We can handle that. If you don't have a mobile optimized site um, or a website at all, we can help you have a good strong presence. Um, we can um, offer you display advertising online. Um, so being able to target, you know, digital banners and so forth to reach your uh, audiences. We, we have a new native advertising product where we can offer, um, we can write uh, articles that are of interest to, you, to, the, to your, the customers that you're trying to reach. So a localized native uh, uh, offering. Google AdWords is, is, a, is a big uh, piece of the puzzle where we can on your behalf, uh, you know, offer targeted search solutions uh, across Google. We can obviously do things like impactful print advertising, like a print wrap, so big, um, big awareness campaigns in print. We we have uh, even more advanced digital display products like uh, homepage takeovers or web page takeovers, where you know the sort of skins and such, um, where you can make a big impact on the site. We do, um, in terms of a boost, we, we do convert print ads into a digital form and sort of create a, a directory-like product, so a very low-end, entry-level kind of product that we call an online boost, which is basically you're buying print. Why not leverage that for SEO purposes and other things? Um, and that's probably that's our lowest cost product. And then uh, we have Sky Ad Smart, which is um, a high-end product for being able to target uh, on Sky's uh, television system, uh, ads, commercials, uh, video commercials within um, within Sky's network. So they have very localized targeting. So you can place uh, a video commercial uh, into very, very small, tight, uh, tightly targeted groups of people. And then lastly, it's not mentioned here because it's it hasn't launched fully. is a, is a Facebook 
pro a product where we are offering um, solutions to, to help local customers reach their customers on Facebook, so through Facebook advertising, um, not through page management and such, which, which we have offered in the past, but really helping them, like we do with Google AdWords, target their customers on Facebook with, uh, through the Facebook uh, advertising. And so what we would do is, is then show, um, and this might actually be on a subsequent call, uh, maybe it's not in this first conversation that we have with the customer about why they should change, how they think about things, but we would then start to show how these products um, meet the needs. So you can see how those products you know, either raise awareness, engage customers, or generate new sales. So um, some are better than others. So, so it's about, as a sales rep, finding the mix of these products that make sense um, for, for your customer. And increasingly we're building bundles of um, products into kind of monthly offerings that, um, that make it even easier for sales reps to, to offer. Um, but at the moment it's, it's meant to be a real solution sale. You know, what, what are you trying to do? Who are you trying to reach? Let me, uh, and what are you, you know, you're trying to raise awareness, you're trying to get people to an event, you're trying to sell things, um, and, then, and then using our products to, um, to meet those marketing needs and putting together a program that works. And I think this is, I mean, you know, I think we, we believe that, you know, kind of given the environment we're in and the one that, that's coming, that, that we really need to have this broad set of products to meet the marketing needs of SMEs. If we had print and digital advertising alone, it probably would, I, I don't think it would be nearly as powerful or would we ne be nearly as relevant as we can be with this broad mix of products that, that really uh, allow us to meet a lot of different needs for our customers. So uh, I think we're in a pretty good position from a product standpoint. I think where we are still, what we're still figuring out is, as I'm kind of going through this deck, which is only a few months old, um, is how to really position that and how to sell that and how to make that, you know, make that easy to understand and 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 not overcomplicated. Um, and we 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 always also make the point that we actually part of the reason that we're appealing to help small businesses do this is that we know local, we know it works, and we can kind of handle this for you. So I think what we're hearing is that sm the small businesses appreciate the kind of ease and flexibility uh, that solutions like this can offer, where with one, with one purchase they can have everything covered from, you know, their, the, a mobile website to um, their Google AdWords to their Facebook uh, targeting. And I think there's still a, lar a large amount of complexity in all of that, that that unless you're in this every day is is very difficult to keep up with. So part of our part of our positioning is that we, we make this easy for you by by taking care of, by taking care of all of it for you. I mean even within Facebook, um, as we're piloting that product right now, we're seeing that you know even though it's a very simple interface to to, to advertise uh, in, and in some ways looks easier than Google. We're actually hearing from small businesses that it's still it's difficult to understand and to figure out what to do um, because the levels of targeting that are available in the Facebook platform are just, you know, tremendous, which which makes it really appealing, but also makes it really complicated. Um, so we're seeing that that there is a demand for helping figure out, you know, exactly how to do this and how to, how to do this well, and that that is a key that is a key message that that we take to market. And Lastly, I think you know we sort of sum up around, along these points. We sort of try to remind people that you know this is a good time to kind of think differently about how they're doing, that they should change the way they're thinking about about things. You know, the customer who's only ever bought print from us or print and digital display, it, you know, it's time to th to think about um, changing that and to expanding to 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 other platforms. And you know, our promise back is that we'll make this easy. We'll 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 create the campaign. Uh, we, we build all of the banners. I think we, we um, do creative development across something like 10,000 campaigns a month. So we're doing this at tremendous scale. So we have uh, a great capacity to build uh, creative for, for our customers. You know, we'll give them the ads they want with the message they want along with end of campaign reporting that shows how everything worked. And, you know, and then it's a low, very low risk uh, or no risk kind of proposition that if it doesn't work for them, you know, we'll we'll figure out a way to make it right, um, but it's pretty much um, something that that you can't you can't lose at. So again, I, you know, I think I think uh, I thought I'd present this sort of in the how we're taking it to market. Um, but this has been you know this is still a work in progress. It's been successful for us in that it's generated a new revenue revenue stream of you know two or three million pounds uh, a year, which is substantial. And there are other uh, companies in the U.S. who are 
far beyond that um, in terms of how they've grown this part of their business. But we're really, really focused on you know offering these marketing solutions as, as part of our daily product set. Um, we formerly called this all digital kit bag, which was a almost a separate business, almost a separate product line from our display and other 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 parts of our business. Now, as you can see, that's with this we don't mention digital kit bag. We're we're essentially it's Johnston Press kit bag in a way where we're able to offer this wide range of products as part of what we do, not as something completely different um, to what to what we do kind of day to day. So um, this has just become now how how we take it to market. So um, thank you. I appreciate the time and hopefully um, there was something in there that uh, that you find helpful. That's really good. Thanks, Jeff. They're really <laughs> Interesting to see how you're pitching it. Um, so we've got a few questions that have come in, um, but just as a broad question, I mean, what's the reaction when you show this to, to SMEs? When do people say, "That's it, I'll take it"? <laughs> you, you've you're, you've got you've recognised the problem that we've got. Oh. I, I think it's still early. I think er, you know we've been taking this particular pitch to market since about July, but I'd say even only since August really in earnest um, and I was with a number of our sales teams over the past few days and they're they're getting comfortable with this message and actually seeing it as a, a great opportunity to change the conversation um, and then I do I think that I think we're starting to just see the results from this really integrated and solution oriented approach um, but I think you know you're, we're hearing really strong stories back that this resonates people get this um, ease and flexibility are really important to them and we're starting to see increased digital sales. So at the moment I think about 24 percent of our advertising is digital um, altogether. So but we have some areas of our company where you know upwards of 30 percent of an advertising sale will be digital and in some, some cases 40, 50 percent. So you're starting to see uh, what we're selling match the, the broader market. And just for clarity, what, what are you including when you say it's it's two to three million um, pounds at the moment? Um, what, what do you include in that? Do you include yeah. your own digital advertising? No, that that would be the marketing services part of what we do. So it would be the Google AdWords, the Facebook, the kind of non-owned products of about two to three million. We we generate um, about thirty million pounds a year of. Uh, digital revenue and some of that's in jobs and property in other places but um, but our digital display would be another 10 million or something like that um, so this is a you know kind of a new incremental part of the business for us okay so we've got some some questions so what, one question um, from Nini Cabero was um, you talked about this online boost uh, for print ads could you talk explain that a, a bit more what that was or an example Sure. We, we partner with a company called Own Local, who's out of the U.S., and what they do is they take the print ad and convert that into a form that's search engine friendly and that is in the form of kind of a directory listing on your site. And having been at this for a while, many years, um, but it's a very automated way to take a print ad and all of the information that's in it and make it available um, digitally so it's really kind of a reverse publishing if you will um, product the way we see that is it's not you know it's not a strategic offering that you know we, we, we think is the future or anything like that but we think look if you're if you're buying a print ad and you have all this information that's going into it we might as well leverage that to help you um, with your digital marketing so we extract the text extract the images and make it available so that it's findable by search engines and linked back to you um, so it's a bit of a kind of SEO play in a way, and we're you know we're charging something like ten pounds for that service, so a very very low cost digital add-on to a print campaign. Okay, a uh, question from Andy Hill: um, How challenging have you found getting print sales reps selling more complex digital solutions, and how does this impact the reduction in print spend? So the you know it's been a journey, and I'd say we're we're still on it. Um, we've done a tremendous amount of training over the past year or two, um, in particular, to get um, our sales reps to the to the next level in terms of being able to offer something besides print. So uh, by no means is it mission accomplished, but we're seeing really really good 
uh, progress. Um, so the the goal is, you know, for four reps who who probably have a you know a strong print advertiser base is, you know, use digital to grow your average revenue per customer and use some of these other products like. AdWords and Facebook or whatever it is as a way to do that. Um, so we're trying to get more revenue from each customer rather than just shift uh, money from print to digital because that doesn't help us in the long run. I mean, in the long run it might, but you know, it doesn't help us in the short run in terms of growing the top line. Um, so it really is about getting the customer to spend more. And you know, and these these customers are buying digi these digital products already. Is that? That research I showed in the beginning shows they're already buying search. They're already buying these types of things. Well, why not from us? And um, if we can offer it alongside of everything else, and um, again, I think it's it's about for us, it's about presenting it as the single uh, sort of campaign that you know any one of these things alone is okay. But when they're working all together, um, you you really have something. And what we can offer is we're the only place you can get all of these things all together. Um, okay, another question. Um, can you talk about the amount of resources you've had to put into this? You know, so for your two to three million, how, how many people do you have working on it? So we we have a, um, a small product team. So it's been four or five people who are really um, putting putting together all of the products, managing the products, um, developing them across um, all of the different. Um, uh, channels, um, and then we have a support team in uh, in one of our centers who handles the fulfillment of the product. So, when a local rep sells um, uh, one of these campaigns, like a Google AdWords campaign, we have a team who's who are experts in that, who reach out to the customer and fulfill that. So, um, so we have both, you know, sort of a product team who's managing these relationships. A lot of these um, products, we are not, we don't own the. Then we're, we're partnered with various people. So obviously Google AdWords. We use Spotser for um, website build. We use um, uh, Matchcraft to help with uh, Google SEM, and um, and so then we're using all these technologies to help uh, bring down our costs to serve the customer. So surprise, it's a relatively modest investment. We just lost the, the last bit of your sentence there, Jeff. Can you still hear us, Jeff? With the right partners in place. Um, and then it's about managing the partners and then... Sorry, Nick, I dropped off for a minute. I hope I'm back now. Oh, yeah, now no, I can hear you again, sir. Did I answer the question before I dropped off? I think so. I think you were just saying it was a relatively small team, but I didn't. I yeah, I think I think that was the end of it. Essentially, with the right partners, we've been able to keep the costs relatively modest. Obviously, there's a there's a cost for buying the media for the customer, so you need to buy, you know, the Google AdWords. Um, it's about 60% of the buy um, goes towards the media within, in, 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 an, in an instance like AdWords, which is pretty standard. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pronounce everybody's names wrong, but um, Edita Kadwea was asking, um, did you get it right that digital ads with you would be costing less than print ads? And, and kind of what what is the rough percentage difference? Yeah, no, it's really difficult to say um, because you know with digital, obviously you're 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 measuring the audience size, and our digital audiences are larger than our print audiences. So um, I think digital is still much less expensive on a per uh, customer basis, on a you know uh, cost per eyeball, if you will, cost per impression. Um, so yeah, I'm I, I'm not exactly sure the exact percentage of you know kind of what the cost is on a per user basis between print and digital, but I would imagine that digital is still probably quite a lot less expensive. And we've got a good follow-up question here: is that so is it profitable as opposed to the you have good revenue, but so is it is it profitable at the moment? 
Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I think, you know, with all of these additional products, you have a fair number of costs in terms of buying the media. So when, when you sell a print ad or a digital display ad, you're keeping, you know, 95% of a, a profit margin, right? But when you're selling Google AdWords or something, you're talking about 65%. So there is a, there is a lot less margin to work with, for sure. Um, and I think it is about combining these products together that make it that make it profitable. I'm not sure sending out sales reps everywhere across the country to sell Google AdWords alone would be profitable. But um, but combined with other things, it's 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 it's, a, it's a, still a good business. And you know, obviously, it's about finding that mix of margin uh, across the the package or the solution that that you're offering, and kind of being aware of the margins of your products as as you do that. And who are your competition on this? I mean, who, who, who else are they going to? Are they going direct to to Google or Facebook, or are, are, there, are you competing with um, local marketing agencies? I think it's yeah, it's all of those. It's it's customers going direct and using the you know the digital interface to buy themselves through self serve. It is local agencies. Um, I think every small business is getting called by. A dozens of digital marketing companies every day um, offering services like this. So I think it is everyone. Um, I think one thing we've seen is that in our markets, the one of the bigger competitors is something that um, that we we've called the guy, which is you know it's not even an agency; it's just somebody they know who's doing this for them for for a bit of uh, a bit of income. So we're seeing a, a fair bit of you know kind of basic uh, marketing that's being handled locally um, by a guy who knows how to do it, you know? So uh, often that's who we come across more than we come across, you know, big established competitive companies, although that's just, you know, maybe uh, partly where, where we're located in, in the country. And a question from Monica Melendez. Um, what's the, what do you think? I mean, it's a bit of a tricky question because there's a lot of different size companies listening. But I mean, what do you think is the kind of minimum investment you have to make in this kind of thing? So it's a new product, a new service. I think um, you have to invest to, ha to get the right partners lined up and to manage them properly. So you need to have the right few partners, whether it's Google AdWords or Google or Facebook. And so you, so you need kind of enough expertise on the product side of things to set them up well. And then you need an investment in support, which you may already have some, somewhere else, but you need people who can service the customer uh, in these areas. And that those can be relatively small when you then also have the right suppliers and the right vendors working with you. Um, so I think you know, I, I don't know the exact the exact amount, but I think you could probably get started with a couple of people, just staying focused and doing a couple of products well, uh, in addition to the ones that, that we've been offering. That sounds doable. Um, I mean, who, who was your inspiration when you were setting this up? I mean, what what examples were you looking to when you were getting started? I guess what end of 2014 was it? Yeah, the, um, the the team who set this up in Johnson Press came from Yell, which was a big Yellow Pages uh, play is a big Yellow Pages player in the UK. Similar product set, um, so there were a lot of learnings from Yellow Pages companies. I, I speak to folks at Hearst and Gatehouse in the US who are doing this, you know, really well um, and have been for a long time. Um, so I think um, you know there are a lot of really good examples in in the US of this working well. Um, and I, I, we, we try to stay up with all of them. Uh, we also, you know, Google themselves have been very helpful because they're obviously interested in selling AdWords and more AdWords. So they have pretty really solid um, partnership teams to help get things going and help, you know, help with best practices and really sort of show the way. So, so Google has been extremely helpful. It's obviously in, in their interest. Um, Facebook, not not so much yet. Um, I think they're still ramping up their reset. They're not set up in the same way as with reseller arrangements and things like that, quite, in quite the same way that Google is. Um, but I think that's early. It's early days for Facebook um, in terms of a reselling type of situation. And we've talked before about um, your ad sales partnership about um, One XL. Uh, 
is that something that you're selling as you're selling reach as part of the marketing services? Yeah, I mean it's it, it is a it is a product that we have on um, um, sort of in the mix is that we can buy digital display outside of our owned and operated um, site, so buying across you know other parts of the internet. Um, so that reach extension is something that that we do have access to. One XL is a consortium of some of the larger regional publishers in the UK who coming together are like the third largest news network here in the country. So it's literally thousands of um, newspaper sites whose inventory is all combined into a single uh, offering, One Excel, and that is mostly sold nationally. That's really about go out and offer a national advertiser a campaign that reaches across all of our publishers rather than us trying to do that individually with with national advertisers. Okay, um, I think we're getting through the questions. Um, let's see, we've got. I mean, one question is is from from my side is I think you've talked before about the the actual ad production um, and that when you're working with such small companies as a regional, um, it's just, there's obviously a, a significant cost on, on the creation side and I think you mentioned that you're outsourcing some of that to India, is that right? We, we do. Um, so we have a pretty established process now for creating um, can, digital campaigns that is fulfilled by a company called EKCS in uh, in India, and so we have I don't know maybe a hundred people or something like that, um, just you know really just turning out digital display campaigns um, because we're we're selling a, a lot of them and some of them are really small. I mean some of the some of the campaigns we're we're serving are a hundred pounds, a hundred two hundred pounds, so. There's, there's a real long tail of digital display going on. Um, it's the same team that's creating print ads, so they're doing it at the same time. So they're building a, a print ad uh, and then generating, you know, various sizes of banner ads uh, from that print ad from a brief that the sales rep has inputted into the system. Um, so yeah, it's. I mean, I think it's just something that we've gotten down, and now we're we're leveraging that capability to do some more advanced things. So. You know, you, you, they could create video ads. They could create video ads for social, um, and so we're, we're we're looking to expand that capability to some of the new some of the new formats. Um, but it is an important part of the mix is being able to seamlessly offer the creative as part of the buy across all of these platforms. It's it's easier said than done, especially when you get into things like Facebook, where you know that setup of that campaign is going to be very specific to Facebook. It's going to be very specific to AdWords when you're on AdWords. It's going to be very different when you're when you're putting a banner ad on a on a website through the ad server. So so it is, it can get quite complex um, at scale. In at scale in particular, it gets really complex. But it seems to be working pretty well. And that's probably time for oh, I suddenly think a whole lot of questions just came in as I, as I looked at the screen. Um, so let's go quickly. Um, one question from Dean, um, who's our um, head of publications here. You know probably. Um, did you mention you were building apps for these customers, or um, is it just web presence that you're building? At the moment, it's just web presence. Um, we've looked at app building and just not seen that it's something that we wanted to, to do. I mean, I think everything that we do in this area really needs to scale. So um, apps is probably more of a niche play for us, maybe as part of a, a more creative solutions type of offering at a higher spend level. But it's not something we've decided to go after and try to scale at this point. OK, uh, I've seen some more questions, but they're, they're, they're quite long. So it's going to, um, I'll probably answer them offline <laughs> with them and try and clarify them. Um, but I mean, thanks uh, for joining us, Jeff. Really, really interesting um, discussion and really interesting to see it from this perspective, from kind of how you're selling it to the um, to the companies themselves. Um, I mean, from my take, Great. Away, well, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> um, I mean, just from my my kind of summary of it, and it'd be interesting to see whether you, if you think this is fair enough. I mean, I think from what you're you're saying, you've basically got a fairly unique position in terms of your relationship with these local companies and what you can offer them. 
and you know the competition is often just that bloke in the corner um, who's been doing it in the past. Um, I think you've got a nice way of looking at it that you're saying you're looking at revenue per customer per customer and not just saying oh, we're trying to migrate these people from print to digital. Um, you know, it's kind of more of a negative way of looking at it. But um, you're trying to say if you're going to buy these things, then then buy them from us, and then to to look at the revenue per customer. Um, and I think what you were also saying, and probably what you can't talk about in in that much detail, is that you're also trying to get the cost down, um, trying to outsource where possible, and, and basically you're trying to build um, a small business with this. So, and I'm sure you've got a lot of other new products in, in the wings, or is, I mean, how, how many other, when you talk about your product portfolio, is this just one part of it, or you, you how, how do you treat that? Yeah, yeah, this is really it for now. I mean, we're adding Facebook to the mix probably next year. We're piloting that at the moment. We've had other products that have come and gone, and we've decided to sort of sunset them. Um, and I think, if anything, we've, we've while we talk about diversifying and having a broad product set, and that that's competitively important. We also have to, you have to be careful not to go too crazy um, because it can get really confusing for salespeople to have so many products that they don't know which one to offer at any given time and how to think about which ones have the best margin. So it can get, it can, it's already complex enough and that's with a really concerted effort to simplify. So um, I would say keeping it simple uh, as possible makes sense. Um, I think you know, maybe we have a couple too many products even at this point, and that as we go, we'll continue to simplify it down. Um, but everything keeps changing so quickly. We need to we need to try to meet the need of some of the new the new and emerging trends. So uh, at the moment, I think I think we're, we're we're good. We'll probably add one or two next year. Cool. Okay. Thanks again, Jeff. Everyone, the um, we have recorded the session, so uh, it should be up um, and available to view. Um, probably by tomorrow, if not sooner. I mean, are you happy for us to share the slides, Jeff? Sure. That would be great. And um, yeah, well, that was a good final message. Don't go too crazy, everyone. And um, have a good rest of Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Bye.